don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to Flat Bush B. Now they got heat on their feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the streets, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chasing. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing. Any of the relationships that y'all changing. We rearranging, making the shame shift. Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift. Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift. Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift. All on Yeshua, man, the rest is manure, man. I'm dying daily, so I rise up a purer man. Pressing B daily, so my sins looking fewer, man. Washing the blood, so my sins down the sewer, man. Yeah, so press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be. Uh. Yeah, so press B with me, and let's let whatever gon' be just be. You can put that whatever you want. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the basement, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. How are you? You look good. Thank you, sir. The hair's on point, Papa. I try to, you know, uh -huh. it's getting a little frizzy. <laughs> it's getting a little frizzy up top. But this is the time. If you do two strand twists, this is the time when you see the frizz, you switch to a twist out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'd give you another five to seven days if y'all, you know what I'm saying? Black hair people know what we're talking about right here. <laughs> um, welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Tim Ross. Shout out to all the dwellers. Shout out to everybody. Um, on B-Side, thank you all so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please consider subscribing, supporting this movement, and allowing us to literally take um, this safe space and this safe place uh, literally all around the world. Um, I can't tell you how many countries are represented now in this basement movement, how many dwellers that we have that have taken the philosophy of press and be and have decided to live a lifestyle where we go down instead of up uh we out here in these streets ladies and gentlemen um we are coming to you today from petersburg virginia uh please tell me i have that right oh you got it right brother I, okay we we landed in richmond we landed in richmond and we here in petersburg and we came to petersburg and you look good too i try <laughs> my best with no uber though to drink <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna talk about the Uber system. It was a struggle. In this Virginia area. It was a little painful. Okay. I'm just what I will say is that it seems like the Uber people, uh-huh, the people that chose to do Uber, you can tell they've only chosen to do it when they want to. Like they're like, <laughs> hey fam, I'm eating chips. Like, that's how, like, they Uber, like, you know what? I will pick up this ride, but if I see a Krispy Kreme, uh -huh. I might cancel it. And I don't care if I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I know I was nine minutes out, but guess what? Find another driver, because I just realized I'm hungry. You were just here, like, you got here four minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> we barely made this live stream happen. I promise you, bro. <laughs> I'm literally watching the little car come to me, and then it turn around and go the opposite direction. And it was like flirting with me. It was like, I might come to you, then I might not. Then I will come, then I might. And then it went from like some dude to some girl. Oh. It was like, Greg is coming to pick you up. And then I wait for nine minutes, and it was like, psych, Ayana's coming to pick you up. And I started interceding for Ayana. I was like, I don't, Ayana can, what she can't do is cancel this 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 Uber. Were, Just, you, do, were you doing that thing you always do? Oh, God. I, I, I didn't do it out loud. <laughs> But in my heart, I was like, listen, man, please get here. Just please get here. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, uh, we here in Virginia uh, tonight. Uh, we we, we going to pack this place out. 
and um, talk about the book. This is that Welcome to the Basement Tour. I want to thank every single person that has already purchased the book. Like, what are y'all doing? Our sales uh, the first week have been very, very good. Um, so much so uh, that Amazon ordered another 15,000 copies. Like, we don't even know what, like, the bookstores or anything has been, but Amazon already ordered another 15,000 copies, which is a huge sign. So thank you for so much for supporting. If you already purchased a book, thank you. If you purchased a book and then purchased additional copies for other people, thank you. Um, I would just ask y'all to be become part of the street team at this point. You know what I mean? Like, just go tell some people to buy the book. Like, you've already bought it. Some of y'all double dipped. You got the original, I mean, you got the physical copy and then you got it on audio as well. And I'm cool. Like, you have done your job. Now just encourage some other people to do it. Like, you, you've you been extravagant in the way that you've expressed uh, uh, your love and support uh, for this movement by buying this book, by getting this book in people's hands. We automatically know it's going to change their minds. Whether they want to fully press B and come down or not, their minds are going to be changed. Once they get the information, they cannot go back to the way they were, right? And so, um, and well, they, they can. Well, practically, street team, Yeah, I did it this morning in my Uber. Yeah. Everyone always asks, what are you in town for? Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, I work with a guy who just dropped a book. Yep. And I literally, he's like, what's the book about? And you can't not give the whole philosophy of the basement. Right, right, right. That's a street team. Yeah, for sure. It happens organically. Absolutely. Last night when we checked in to the hotel, the dude was like, what brings you in? I'm like, I dropped a book. He was like, what's the book about? I gave him the elevator pitch. This dude said it like four times. Welcome to the basement. Welcome to the basement. Well, like He knew that repetition was going right. to get him to. And so I came back down. I, I do have to admit, I was way too, because I didn't get to eat on the plane like I told you. And I needed protein and some carbs, like some real ones. Uh -huh. And so the only, bro, after scouring and scouring <gasps> and scouring, the only thing I could get was Wendy's. Praise God. <laughs> I'm not praising God. Did you walk there? No. Oh my God, Tim. Okay. No, okay. I I I put my faith in this shaky Uber Eats <laughs> system, and um, they brought me some uh, fries and um, what what did they bring me? Fries, and then I got a um, baconator. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you I didn't get a baconator. The fact that you know what it is is listen, disgusting. The, hey, listen, you you sin. You know we're confessing sins right now. Yeah, yeah. Are we? You did that. Okay. And I did hear the door. Ch -ch -ch and yeah. I was like, okay, he left. That means I could do something, too. Yeah. I went to the vending machine. I got ruffles and a Kit Kat, daddy. Yo, that's college dorm, fam. <laughs> when I tell you that's freshman year college dorm and your FAFSA is running out and your parents ain't got no money to send you, nigga, like that's, are you kidding me right now? Ruffles uh, and a Kit Kat? It was painful, bro. Damn. It was painful. Yeah. That's all you could muster. It's a new low, brother. Child, please. I thought I was bad. You should have got a baconator. <laughs> I would trade up to a baconator. But but I got I got I don't you know what I don't even know what I got. All I know was it was two square patties because you know Wendy's does the corners. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess they use a stencil to stamp out mm -hmm. uh their beef. Mm -hmm. And 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 it was two corn two Burnt corners. It, I know it was somebody black that made them patties, cause they every, all black people do. They meat well done. They they, they that 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 beef was shriveled up, <laughs> hiding. And I did it in a lettuce wrap. That le, that that lettuce was on its last roughage leg. I promise you. I think all that lettuce is bad. And but but they're used to people having a bun. Yeah, yeah. And so how many people like lift up the bun and like examine the lettuce? You yeah. just see the little leaves sticking out. Struggle. And so, but bro, I went and looked at the spine of that thing. <laughs> it looked like it had been dipped in red wine. <laughs> I thought to myself, now either either Bobby Flay is in the kitchen at this Wendy's, or this is just some old roughage, fam. <laughs> Y'all not about to sit up here and make me believe that. All y'all lettuce is fresh because it clearly is not. Um, yes, Lakeisha Harris, red wine. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know my my imagination is Liddy. 
Uh, I love all of y'all. Um, thank y'all so much for being here. And I know, you know, I was off last week. And that that had more to do with the fact that we were traveling. I was traveling and you weren't with me. Well, you were still grinding, though. You weren't yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. It's a blur now. Where was I? I was in D.C. Yeah. I was in D.C. I was with um, Anthony O'Neill. And um, and that was great. And I went from D.C. to Philly. Shout out to everybody in Philly that came through last week. Like, um, I we sold books in an airport terminal, in, like, the Philadelphia International Airport Terminal, like, on the other side of TSA. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of TSA, that was cool. And then we did a Barnes & Nobles that night. Um, and the line was, they were on the second floor and the line was like snaked around all the bookshelves and stuff. And to all y'all that came out in Philly, thank you so much. Uh, so, some of y'all drove a couple of hours, excuse me. And one one lady drove six hours to come through with her book, get it signed. Um, I love y'all so much. And now we're in, now we're in Petersburg. And just a quick, quick shout out. Yep. We got Sony in the house, who came with all his gear. Sony is a real OG dweller. He is an OG dweller. Sony, hop in the camera real quick, just so you, we can give you a quick shout yeah, out. Yeah, you got it. You got to shout out Sony. The this other way, Sony. Sony. There you go. There oh, are you in? He's in. He's yeah, yeah. He's in the frame. He'll pop in a little bit. Okay, there he is. There, there, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You know what? It was delayed when I'm looking in here, and so I was like, did he even come in? Did he go to the opposite direction? So follow him, please. We'll we'll tag him on Instagram. He he came and made this happen. He made New York happen. The dude's a beast. And then the last shout out is uh, Jamie Kilstein and Travis Green's episode is dropping today. Great. So that's going to be dope. And on B side. On, on the B side. Or yep. on, on YouTube and B side. Oh, on YouTube yep. and B side. That's fine. So that's it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey. All right. So, um, my daddy's gone, y'all. That's it. Like, that's it. That's it. I, um, this is the first episode since he left. And, um, <sighs> what I'm grateful for is that I don't have a, I don't have a job. I, I really don't have a job. <laughs> I don't have a job at all, really. Um, uh, but I, I'm just grateful that in this season of my life, I'm, I'm, I, I, what I do for a living is is not something that I have to try to like, you, you know, push that to the background to like perform. You know what I mean? Like I, my dad didn't die and then I have a football game the next day. My dad didn't die and I got to play a basketball game tonight. You know what I mean? My dad didn't die, but I got to be the news anchor. You, you know what I mean? A lot of people have... Um, traumatic situations and 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 deaths in the family that happen, and they don't actually get to be in that moment um, all the time because they they have to work, they have to perform, they gotta go to work, they gotta do a thing, they gotta take care of business, and um, yo, I just thought this is my first live back since my daddy died. The only thing I'm talking about is my daddy. <laughs> like, I bet you I don't take no questions today. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to talk about. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't care today. Like, I'm grieving and doing. Like, we grieving and doing stuff, right? We 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 all know the the importance of and how how we how we integrate and is it's this beautiful conjunction, right? It is. There, there are four, far more ands that we can incorporate into our lives than buts. And so I get as many buts out of my life as possible, uh, and I embrace as many ands as possible. And so, like, you know, um, this ain't no class. This ain't no, like, I'm going to sit here and tell you how to grieve. Nah, I, I, I am grieving. Like, like we ain't about to sit here and, and and act like I'm about to give you a master class. So I'm like, here's how you handle the grief of your father. My daddy has been dead for nine days. Well, this is embarrassing. I need to change the title. 
Wait, why? Because you're amazing, and I put Tim Ross on losing his father. How to properly grieve? So, yeah, change that. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't supposed to cuss. Listen, <laughs> it's getting deleted right now. And, and I and not not out of anger. Um, I, I'm I'm just saying I'm I'm just saying like I don't know how to I don't know if I'm properly grieving. Like I'll ask my therapist next week. Like you know what I'm saying? I know I am grieving though, and grieving grieve grieving is is something that hits you in waves and um it feels different at different times like you know last week when 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 I started off on this tour I I just knew I talked to Juliet and my kids and my mom and we all agreed that I should do this I should go on the tour I didn't I didn't come on this tour for my dad right like I'm going to do this for my father I ain't got to do nothing for my daddy my daddy my daddy was pleased with me but I don't I don't I'm not performing for my dad I don't I don't I'm not out here because I need to I want to make my dad my daddy was proud of me I can cancel this whole tour I can turn this pot off right now my daddy's proud of me <laughs> and he told me so it's something I'm convinced of and I no one needs to convince me for the rest of my life like my daddy told me I heard it it is in it is metabolized it is in my heart it is in my soul for life what I realized, though, um, and I picked up on this last week after I, after I got back um, from Philly, is I actually, I, I miss my dad more while traveling because I realized the majority of our conversations is when I was traveling or when he was running errands with my mom, when he was out of the house or I was out of the house. I would say the amount of times I talked to my daddy when I was at home and he was at home would be less than 15% of the time that we talked. We were always talking while we were moving. We were always talking while we were going. And so um, either Juliet is my first call or daddy is my first call. I land the plane. I call daddy. I get in the hotel. I call daddy. My daddy had like a whole little map. He was so excited about all the places his son traveled and, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I got a map and I'm gonna put a stick pin in every place you go, every city you've been in, every country you've gone to. And so um, I realized when I, came, when I came back last week, I'm like, yo, whew. my dad would have been my first call. I got to DC, daddy would have been my call. I got to Philly, daddy would have been my call. When, that little dead spot when I was at <laughs> when I'm in when I'm in Philadelphia International Airport trying to slang books at nine o'clock in the morning, right? And like, there's nobody coming. The only people looking at me is TSA, right? Um, that little dead spot, I would have called my dad. And so, y y you know, getting getting back on the road this week. You know what I mean? We're in we're in Virginia today. We'll be in Atlanta on Thursday. Um, I'm holding this tension of like, I'm traveling and I would have called my daddy. So it's making me miss him. But then traveling makes me feel closer to him because that's when we would have been having our conversations, right? So, yeah, I, I, I um, you, you know, <laughs> again, I don't know if I'm properly grieving, <laughs> but I do know that I am grieving. And again, grieving looks different to a lot of people. Um, obviously, uh, my dad could have left us 21 years ago. He had a brain aneurysm. My dad's been a walking miracle for the last 21 years. So let's, let me thank God, first of all. God, thank you for giving me 21 additional years with this man. Because this could, he could have already been a, um, a distant memory. Um, in terms of like when he left. So um, some of y'all may know, maybe y'all don't know, but my dad had a brain aneurysm in 2003. Um, he was at church, he didn't feel well, he collapsed and he was hospitalized and he had a brain aneurysm. He was put in ICU, intensive care, and he was given a 1% chance to live. A, ladies and gentlemen, a 1% chance to live. Okay, and um, my dad um, 
was in and out of consciousness and uh, hooked up to all these machines. One day, me and Miles are in there with him on each side of the bed. Um, I was on daddy's right side. Miles was on daddy's left side. And uh, he was, or was I on his left? No, I'm closing my eyes, daddy. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was on his right side and Miles was on his left. And this was very movie-like. Like, my my guy, like, would get an Academy Award for this because he was kissing my hand, put it down, then he raised Miles' hand and kissed his hand, and he just said, I love you. I love you. I'm a, daddy was always affectionate, and that's where I get it from. I hug everybody. I kiss my daddy to the day he died on his cheek. Just, we 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 just had that embrace and that love for each other. But he was kissing our hands, telling us he loved us. Then he flatlined. I mean, epic, like movie, like beep. I mean, gone. And um, uh, he died, like he died right in front of us, while telling us he loved us. So if that would have been the last thing we heard, it would have been beautiful. So he dies. Um, Miles is stunned. I'm just beside myself emotionally. And miraculously, they bring him back. Again, dude was given a 1% chance to live. Miraculously, they bring Guy back. Like, Charles Edward Ross comes back. And when you experience this, in that, what's happening to you and your brother? Like, your reaction? Yeah, so, so Miles goes completely blank. Like, body is just not moving. I'm about to make everybody die in the ICU. I'm in the floor. I'm no god. Like I'm I'm getting I'm if that if he wins the Academy Award, I was going to get best supporting actor because I went crazy. My daddy! I'm rolling on the floor. They trying to get me. I remember security coming in. Security came in and they were like, "Sir, you need to calm down right now." And the nigga had like a you know, he had the nerve. My daddy is dead. Like there's a like it is just a long flat line the, the 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 sound is still going sir you need to control yourself right now i looked at this dude i know this was this was a la moment this, this was just a la nigga moment right i looked at Holmes and i was like hey hey dog um is your dad dead and he was like no no i just need you to calm down i said hey dude I'm going to need you to back the. <laughs> Let's switch it to juvenile. I'm going to need you to back that thing up and not in a provocative way. I'm going to just need you to back back. Now, let's switch it to who? who is back 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 back. Give me 50 feet. Y'all remember that song? Y'all don't remember that song? Back, back, back. Y'all that young? Lil O. Is that who did it? It says Lil O backpack. Not backpack. 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 Back, back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This nigga trying to come up with the Dora the Explorer remix. <laughs> nigga just said backpack. <laughs> That's Dora's song. Backpack, backpack. <laughs> give me, give me. <laughs> Is it give, give me 50 feet? Give me 50 feet. Who or, did? Or who I'm going to grab the gat. Back, 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 back. Give me 50 feet. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, Lil, Lil O. Lil O. Lil O. Lil O. I don't know where you are right now. You probably <laughs> you probably big O by now. You should have grown up. Um uh wherever you are right now, Lil O, that song you're that's one I don't need, if you did a whole album, I do not know any of the songs you did, Lil O. But that song is still stuck in my head. And I would like them jokers. So so I told him the and he understood. Obviously, it's an emotional moment, right? But I can't also, like, disrupt other people that are in ICU and all that kind of stuff and spaz them out. So I got what he was talking about, but it was an emotional time. Anyway, that was a, the, all of that I just told you was about two and a half minutes. And then it was because <laughs> my mom was downstairs with the other family members. So I walked downstairs, 
wipe my eyes because I got to tell my mama her husband flatlined and the doctor wants to know if they can perform a procedure and they need her consent to drill a hole in his head to relieve pressure, put a shunt in and, and, and relieve the pressure from his brain. I walk downstairs as calm as I'm talking to you right now. I said, hey, mom, I need to speak to you for a minute. She was like, oh, okay, baby. And we go back upstairs and I said, daddy flatlined and the doctor needs your consent for an emergency procedure. There's a slim chance that they'll be able to bring him back, but they need to do this procedure. She's like, oh my God. She would go on to tell me later, she said, baby, when you came and got me, it was like there was an, an angel-like glow on your face because I could not tell at all that there was an emergency. And I didn't want to alert the other family members because then we would have made a scene. The Rosses are loud. <laughs> we're loud and we're emotional and we we wear it. We don't we don't we don't play all that. If we mad, we mad. If we happy, we happy. If we sad, we sad. Whatever we are, we just are. You know what I'm saying? So and then God brought daddy back. And mom became his primary caregiver. And we got 21 more years with dude. Like 21 more years with this dude as a result. And good years too. Like he wasn't just like, you know, he survived his aneurysm, but nah, we got 21 good years. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And so I'm not going to be selfish and be mad that he's gone. Uh, but I will tell you, I'm pissed about that time frame. It's effing rude is what it is. I'll, I'll say that. It's freaking rude. freaking rude we were supposed to renew our vows together this year mom and dad celebrating 50 years of marriage may 21st and juliet and i celebrating 25 years of marriage may 1st we picked the perfect day may 11th in between me and juliet's anniversary date in between him and mommy's anniversary date may 11th fell on a saturday it was a perfect freaking day Mommy got her dress in the mail like three weeks before he went into the hospital. So, like, y'all got to understand how quick this was, man. Like, it's just rude, dude. I'm sorry. That's rude. I'm going to have to ask God about that one. Not now, though. He don't owe me no answers right now. I'll, I'll still ask, but, like, I'll ask him when I get up. It's just the timing was rude. It's just not cool. There's no perfect time to die, ever. You, you're going to miss something, and then you're going to miss them. But, like, you, you're, you're hospitalized January 7th, and then you're gone February 24th. Seven weeks? Like, with no, there's no, like, lead up to it. Well, you know what? He was having a lot of challenges and da-da-da-da-da. It's just like my side hurt. I got a pain in my side and da-da-da-da. And maybe we should call a doctor. Maybe I should go to the hospital. We go to the hospital. He's hospitalized that moment, January 7th. He's dead February 24th. That's rude. <laughs> I don't give a damn what nobody say. That's freaking rude. It just happened too quick. Mm -mm. And you have a lot of good things going on. And, and it's just, it's such a weird tension you're holding right now of so much things to celebrate. Yeah. And then your hero goes. Yeah, dude. And I would, you know, the things I'm celebrating is what I would call them about. That's the thing, dude. I would be talking to my dad about all this right now. <laughs> I'm in a freaking public library in Petersburg, Virginia. Selling a freaking book. My dad would just be through the moon. 
with like every single stop though. Not like, hey, yeah, your tour, yeah, yeah, you already told me. What else? He would just be like, what? Where are you now? You know. Ah! Yeah, dude. That's not, um. Mm. How are the kids doing? So, y y you know. Hmm. Uh, you know, I'm putting together the obituary, the program, the whole program for the, uh, for the funeral. And I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm editing <laughs> all of these tributes. I got to read everybody's tributes. I got to read all the grandkids' tributes, my kids, his sisters, his brother. And, um, all of them have these amazing words about my daddy, and they're all true. And I'm just editing it and cleaning it up, and then I see Nathan's and I see Noah's, and I'm not okay. And I'm on a plane. <laughs> I'm on a flipping plane. I spent $19 for Wi-Fi so that I could get it all to the person that's, you know, editing and sending, editing and sending. And, dude... I read Nathan's and I read Noah's and I'm like, nah, fam. And then it makes me think about my time with them. And dude, there's something about your parent dying that that sets off your mortality clock. You know, my brother, my younger brother preceded me in death. That completely destroyed. When you lose a sibling, it destroys your mortality clock because your your sibling's not supposed to go before your parents, right? And idealistically and so you're just sitting there sh when miles died and he's younger than me i was so short-circuited i was like i'm about to die any day and everybody i love me is gonna die tomorrow you know if, if my loved one didn't call me back at like 20 minutes after they said they were gonna be somewhere or do something they weren't i wasn't like oh i'm concerned they were dead to me like i thought they were dead and the cops were gonna call <sighs> so poppy dies he would have been 75 this year I was born when he was 26. I'm 49 this year. He would have been 75. So now in my mind, I'm like, oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Do I have 26 years left? Because if I have 26 years left, I'm a blink and that's going to be over. <laughs> right? I've known Juliet 26 years. I've been married to her 25. I've been a believer in Jesus Christ for 28 years. I've been in Texas for 27 years. Like, 26 years ain't a long time, fam. That's going to that's gonna come get me in a minute. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to process that. Like, oh, my God. Would, would. Is 26 years enough time? Right? Like, is it enough time? telling you this this is stuff i'm thinking about real time is that enough time and i and i can't imagine if somebody loses their parent when they're 40 something years old <laughs> you know the parent dies when they're in their 40s or the parent died in their 30s and they're already thinking like i'm 10 years older than my mama was when she died right I'm, i might be 12 years older than my mama when 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 she died i'm I'm five years older than my daddy when he died. Man, this is new territory for me. I don't, want, don't nobody expect no book no time soon on this. I'm not doing it. But, man, reading my, my, my boy's um, words and, and my, my niece's and nephew's words are um, crazy. And then you got to pick pallbearers. And then you got to pick... Ah! Oh! Mom wrote his obituary. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, all this stuff, man. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell y'all why, why I, um, you know, when I put that, the day that daddy died, 224-24, which was a dope day. I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a dope day to go. 
22, 24, 24, my daddy was like, you ain't going to forget this day. <laughs> I wouldn't have forgot it anyway, sir. At least it wasn't on like February 29th, though. Yeah, no. That dumb leap year. <laughs> and then you're like, when are you when are you like grieving his death? At 11.59 on, the, on February 28th or 12.01 on March 1st? Because you got this ghost day that only sticks his head up like a whack-a-mole every four years, right? Screw 29th. Just get rid of it or keep it. One or the other, but don't keep phantom ghost protocoling this day. It's whack. Anyway, um, what's up? I forgot what I was going to say. Well, you were walking us through how, you know, you're, you read your whole family's obituaries with from Nathan and Noah. Yeah. And 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 he died on two twenty four twenty four. I was about to say something, but that's another thing about grief. <laughs> mm. It's like you're you're just like, what am I even? I can't even remember. My wife would be telling me something, and I'm like, I maybe I said it, maybe I didn't. I don't know. Mm. I'm grieving. Like I'm, I can't call it right now. You know what I mean? Um, are you? Do you? Well, because it's so fresh and it is grief. Are you? Do you? Are you experiencing like straight depression right now? Do you feel numb? Where where are you kind of like? Thank you, Holy Spirit. It came back. Mm -hmm. I know what I was about to say. On the day that he died, I put out a, I put out a photo of him, beautiful photo of him, uh, and I've been putting out a photo every day with my daddy in it. But on that day, I said, you know, daddy's gone. Don't call. Don't text. Right. And the reason why I said that, this I know, this I know from Miles' death. When somebody dies, now, if I am going to give some advice, <laughs> it ain't about grieving. It's going to be about how to help somebody when they're grieving. When, when the death of an immediate family member happens, the reason why I said don't call, don't text, I don't give a damn. I'm so sorry for your loss. Nigga. Yeah, me too. My deepest condolences. Y'all don't even know what that damn word means. So stop that. <laughs> Go look up the definition of condole and then ask yourself, you're at the deepest part of that, that word? Just say you're sad. Say, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm heartbroken for you. Don't say condole. Don't say condolences. Don't say deepest condolences. You got to remember, I'm a wordsmith. We did the etymology on this word. And we, we went back and we was like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if people know what deepest condolences mean. I don't know if people are condoling correctly. You look up that word, look up that word. Look up that word condolence, see what happens. You're going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know if I was condoling. Maybe I was sad to hear about the news. But condole? Stop playing. So I, I told everybody, don't don't call, don't text, because it would have just been a blur. I'm too numb. Daddy's gone. If my phone's pinging, I'm looking down. Maybe I'm maybe I'm robotically responding to you, but I'm not. Your words ain't registering. Just pray. You know what I'm saying? Because think about what happens between death and the funeral. Daddy dies on the 24th. Okay, daddy's gone. There's no more breath in his body. I'm looking at this man's shell, and there's no lungs in his, there's no air in his lungs. His heart has stopped beating, okay? Eyes are set. Homie is gone, okay? As sad as this moment is, we got to call a nurse. A certified nurse or the 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 um uh the hospice team to come make an official pronouncement of this man's death. So it don't matter that we saw him dead at eleven fifty five a.m. The official pronouncement is when somebody comes, puts the little stethoscope in their ears, and then that little cold piece 
of metal on his chest, and they got to let it sit there for two minutes straight. Knowing there ain't no heartbeat, knowing there's no activity, but for it to be an official pronouncement, you need two minutes silent. And when she got done, the official pronouncement of his death was 2.06 p.m. No matter how sad you are, now you got to call a funeral home to pick up his body. Because this is not a homicide. There is no foul play. There is, there, there, there is nothing more than this man died of natural causes and or this disease. So now you got to call a funeral home. You got to call a funeral home, and you got to you you got to say the same thing over and over to about two or three people. Then they got to talk to the team for the for the official pronouncement. Then somebody got to come out and get the body. Within twenty four hours, we are now administrators. We're not just grievers; we're administrators. You take in a whole, a whole new job. A job most families ain't even prepared for. So now we got to get the funeral home. We got to pick up. We got to pick the place of burial. We got to we got to start checking on insurance. We got to start checking on the um, the, the policy that was in place. We got to start calling all these different people. You better have the paperwork in place. You better have all your stuff in order. If this person was a veteran, you better have that DD-12. Um, uh, if you want them to 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 have. Uh, that that kind of salute uh, for their f to be honored uh, as a military veteran. All this stuff is going on real time. Ain't nobody looking down at their phone, at least not me, to see if you condoling or not, to see if you sad or not. So that's not being rude. That's about I don't even need you right now. That's not when I need you. The majority of people that lose a loved one, an immediate loved one, they do not need you immediately. They need prayers immediately. They need the presence of God immediately. They need God's comfort and his peace immediately. They don't need you immediately. And unless they call for you, don't assume it's you. <laughs> oh, I'm talking now. Don't flatter yourself. Don't flatter yourself. Don't think it's you. Don't think you're the exception. <laughs> we talking to all y'all. Unless we specifically call for you, we don't need you right now. 24 hours after the death, 48 hours after the death, 72 hours after the death, we don't need you right now. This is not when we need you. We need you praying. Just pray. Just pray. So that, go, that go, don't call, don't text wasn't about being rude. It was about understanding that we got to be administrators right now. My daddy died on a Saturday. I was on a plane on a Monday. So Julia is handling, handling administrative duties. I'm on a tour that we all agreed that we should go on. I don't need my phone pinging. I can't get back to you right now. I mean, I want to get back to you right now. Maybe I did get back to you, and it was just out of obligation because you can't follow directions. <laughs> and so it's nine days later. I'm, I, I was just waiting to see. Nah, fam, don't. Because, again, unless I specifically call you or unless your loved one specifically asks for you, just, just keep praying. Because guess what's on my mind between now and this coming Saturday? A eulogy. That's the wish of my father. I eulogize him. Say less, fam. That's going to happen. So you're preparing for that. And you're doing this. And we're doing this. And so, well, he got to have his phone in his hand. I'm going to text him now. I'm not checking for your text. I will leave you on red. <laughs> Why? Because let me tell you when I'm going to need you. After the funeral. I'm trying to put somebody up on game. This is, this is 
how to how 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 to really be there for your grieving person 101 now that you can put in there <laughs> you know what i'm saying that you can put in the description how to how to deal with the grieving person 101 let me put you up on that the first the, between 7 to to 14 days that's all administrative that's all paperwork i'm on a plane editing people's tributes going through the obituary to make sure the punctuations are correct, to make sure there's no spelling errors, to make sure the, the, the tribute has the right name to it, the right last name to it if they're married, if they're an in-law, if they're an in-love. It's all these different details you got to do. Then you got then you got the order of service, and then you got other uh, 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 well-esteemed and honorable people that, that, that have titles and you want to get their titles right? That's all on me. Juliet's handling her thing. I'm handling my thing. Mommy's handling her thing. We all doing something. So now we, we got this week and, 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 and then we got a funeral. Guess what I'm going to need a call? After I say my final goodbye. You know what happens with most people? Most people, as soon as their loved one die, the first 7 to 10 days, 7 to 14 days, sometimes 21, you're bombarded. I'm thinking about you, praying for you, thinking about you, praying for you, thinking about you, praying for you. And you, you're, 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 they are responding to the person that needs those prayers, but they're responding in real time, thinking about you, praying, by, thinking about you, praying. And after, usually, for most people, and y'all and holler at me in the chat, Tell me if I'm wrong. After the funeral, that phone is silent. Funeral happens and you think that final goodbye was synonymous with the final call and the final text. Now I actually need you to check on me. I don't need you the first 14 days. I need you 15 days and forward. Yep, they in here. They talking to me. Yep, silent. You talking right. I didn't get any calls after my father was buried. Demisha, I'm so sorry. That sucks. Till this day, till this day. Funeral happens and folks disappear. Radio silence. That's right, Andrew. Check on me afterwards, fam. Yeah. Yeah, it's crickets. 10,000% facts after my grandfather died. Phone is static. Yep, those were the hardest days. I'm trying to tell y'all. Check on them. <laughs> Holla at me after my daddy's funeral. Because that's when it's going to be That's the final goodbye. And that's when that eerie silence really starts. Now, you know damn well that your text or your call ain't going to fill the void of my daddy's death. That's number one. Let me tell you something else. When you call that person afterwards, talk about who they lost. Don't talk around it. Oh, I, I, did, not know, I did not know I was about, I, I did not know I was about to be in here like this. Don't be, don't be getting up on the phone. You, <laughs> I just want to call and check on you. You okay? Stop being, don't be that generic. Call me, ask me, you miss your daddy, don't you? Say it. Call him by name. You lose, uh, so my mom is, my mom is a widow now. All her friends, call her. I know you miss Charles's voice right about now, don't you? Let her cry. You ain't got to fix it. Don't come up with no dumb verse. <laughs> Especially not to my mama or me. My mama know that Bible and she put all that she knew in me too. So I don't need a scripture. Don't, don't, don't do that. I'm going to tell you now, don't you do that. I don't want to hear nothing. Don't give me no Bible verse. Whatever Bible verse you come up with, I know it. I don't want it. 
I wanted to give you this Bible verse to comfort you. Stop playing. I know that verse. Just contain my emotions. Sit in the silence. I don't care how awkward it is for you. Maybe you, you want to break the silence. Maybe, maybe, maybe that silence makes you uncomfortable and you want to break the silence and say something. Just don't. Sit there. It's fine. It's fine. I sat where they sat. Yeah, that's good. Let me let me pull that up. There's this dope verse in um A lot of people only go to Job when they talk about friends and sitting in the silence of somebody's sadness. But um Ezekiel got a really good verse. He got some good stuff in here. Blah 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 blah. Spirit of the Lord lift me up. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, the spirit of the Lord lifted me up. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter number three, verse number 14. The spirit lifted me up and took me away. I, I went in bitterness and turmoil, but the Lord's hold on me was strong. Then I came to the colony of Judean exiles in Tel Aviv uh, beside the Kabar River. I was overwhelmed and sat among them for seven days. After seven days, the Lord gave me a message. Child, please. And you want to run up in there talking. <laughs> Hush. That's a word for somebody. I don't know who that word is for. Here's the word. Hush. Shut it up. I don't care if you're an apostle. Shut it up. I don't care if you're a prophet. Shut Shut it up. I don't care if you're an evangelist, pastor, or teacher. Shut it up. Resist the urge to speak. Resist the urge to say something that you think is godly, but it's stupid. You're going to get a double anointing now that your dad's gone. I just feel like God's going to open up and unlock more doors for you now that your dad's gone. Oh, so my daddy's death is the key to a, a, a deeper anointing? Do you hear yourself? Oh, so my dad's death is going to open up more doors? Oh, thanks, God. Do you hear you? Just hush. I promise you, it, 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 it won't take nothing from you. I know you got a doctorate in, in theology, but we don't need it right now, though. Your presence is more important than that. I'm trying to help you to help your people. Yeah, Malik, I'm with you. Forget that door. And I know that's not the F you was talking about, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> he really put F in that door. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. I got you, Malik. I got you, Malik. Um. Uh. Yeah, but yeah, if if I if I have if I have to choose. Between, between a greater anointing or Charles Everett Ross still being here, y'all can take all the oil. <laughs> if I got to choose between more doors opening, uh, daddy's gone. Oh, guess what? Uh, I don't know. Oprah called. Hang up, Oprah. Give me Charles back. Obama called. Hang, hang up, Obama. Give me Charles back. Uh, Elon Musk wants to donate a billion dollars to B-Side. Hang up, Elon. I want Charles back. It's not, it's, it's, this is not rocket science. I don't. I'd rather have my daddy. My daddy is my hero. What them other people going to do? Oprah ain't my hero. Obama's not my hero. Elon Musk is not my hero. Charles Edward Ross is my hero. He's the reason why I don't have no father wounds. Contrary to, to, to some belief by some certain pastors in the DFW Metroplex, in the Grapevine area. I don't have no father wounds.
My father made me the man I am. Charles Edward Ross is the reason why I'm Timothy Charles Ross. Y'all going to learn. Now that daddy's dead, who child y'all going to learn? Don't think I got this way by myself. <laughs> I don't know if y'all think I'm some rogue agent out here. I am my daddy's son. He made me the man I am. I am a congruent man. I am a man of integrity. I'm a man of character. I am a man of responsibility. I am a man that when I say yes, I mean yes. And when I say no, I mean no. If I'm wrong, I have no problems coming back and, and apologizing. He taught me humility. He taught me when to repent. And he also taught me to, ten, to stand 10 toes down in what I believe. You can't make me budge off that. You'll never get me to budge off something. Because my daddy taught me how to handle adversity. It's, yeah, y'all gonna learn. My middle name is Charles for a reason. So, you ain't gotta like nothing I do. And you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. I'm a Ross man, through and through. Hopeless romantic because of Charles Edward Ross. My mama in, in her natural born life has never backed her car out of a driveway in her life. <laughs> I got this honest. I got my husband Riz honest. My mama has never backed a car out of her driveway in her life. My mama has never filled her gas tank up with gas in her life. My dad had a rose garden uh, in front of our house, zero lot house. This man uh, uh, tended and cultivated a garden, grew, grew roses. And once a week he would dethorn one of, he'd break off one of those uh, roses, dethorn it, and put it on the dashboard of my mother's backed-in car. That when she got up in the morning to drive to work, there was a rose from the rose garden, dethorned on her dashboard. Sometimes with a love note. That's, how, that's why they was about to celebrate 50 years, because daddy had that husband risk. When I turned 13 years old, uh, once a quarter, my mom and daddy left us at the house. We, we're, we're Gen X kids. <laughs> 13, when I turned 13, they didn't, it wasn't no 16, 17, 18, 19. When I turned 13 years old, my mom and daddy left on a Friday, did not come back until Sunday night. Daddy, mommy, where y'all going? We're grown. You don't ask us that. Here's what you do. When this phone rings, you pick up before the third ring. And we bet not hear nobody else in this house except y'all. Here's $20 for pizza. And mama bought you enough TV dinners between Friday and Sunday. And once a quarter, we found out later, them jokers was at the embassy suites. <laughs> them niggas was at the embassy suites. Wasn't even three miles away. But he, he taught me at a very young age, you are my children, but this is my wife. I'll never forget one day, Daddy, me and Miles was making up too much noise. Um, early teens. And we just, you know, it's late. I think it was summer vacation or something. We just loud. And my dad cracked the door to our room ever so slightly. I don't know how he stuck his head through that crack. But like he cracked the door, but his whole head came through. And he looked at both of us and he said, if either of you wake up my wife, there will be problems. And we said, yes, sir. And he slid his head back through that crack and closed the door. And Miles just went back to watching TV. I was always the philosophical processing. I'm like, 
I'm sitting there like, he didn't say mama. This man just somehow miraculously slid his big old head through that crack and said, if you wake up my wife, how come he didn't say mommy? And I, I had to sit with that thing, and I realized that night, oh, there is a difference between my mama and his wife. And I need to be careful. Because <laughs> I just think he made it clear that if it comes down between me being his son and her being his wife, I think he going to choose her. Mm-hmm. And you were okay with that? What? I told my kids the same thing. I'll never forget my dad telling me. I think I was 15 or 16. I had done something. I, I was in the wrong. I, I did something. And my dad said, I want to make one thing clear to you. We are not friends. <laughs> oh, my God. Homie said, we are not friends. He said, um, you are my son. He said, and if you live to be 30, you'll be considered to be my friend. If you live. <laughs> oh, he might have just let me live. He said, if you make it to 30, uh, you'll be my, you'll be my friend. And we were friends. My daddy has been my friend for a very long time. Still my daddy, but also my friend. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, my daddy, my daddy is, uh, he's in me, he's in my kids. Um, he was a great mentor, super wise, man of few words. I get all my words from my mama. My daddy was a man of few words, but they were all meaningful. I don't think my, my words are as meaningful per capita like per word as my daddy's um oh i wanted him on the basement so bad mm. oh man i wanted to introduce you all to him so bad he just wasn't in a place and i don't mean like right before he died either i just like he was uh one of the one of the side effects of uh, that the doctor told us years ago of his um, aneurysm was that as he got older, his short term mem memory would would go, and um, that's the only reason why he wasn't on the basement because the short term memory. I just wasn't gonna put him in no bad. I wanted y'all to meet him so bad. <sighs> mm, that would have been my favorite episode. Because he was just so funny. He's just so funny. And everyone in the chat saying, uh, we did meet him through you. You did. I promise you, you did. Yeah, for sure. If you met him, you did meet me. That's why I'm kind of unapologetic about it. Like, listen, I, I, have, I have totally embraced who I'm supposed to be in this season. And I know it ain't for everybody. Like... I know that. I know that. I know I'm not for everybody.
But man, everybody's just different. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's just different. And daddy was able to embrace people who were different and like still love them and celebrate them and, and, and uh, all of that. Like, I just, man, I just hope we, we, when I say we, I hope we get there as like believers in Jesus and Christians. I don't like saying I'm a Christian too much because there's some meanies out here. A lot of these people are mean. Oh my goodness! I don't know how to. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna. Well, uh, ain't, no, ain't no sense to me trying to figure that out right now. Yeah, yeah. If you met me, you did meet my daddy. But I, I just wanted him to meet y'all. <laughs> I just wanted him. I just wanted him to be on here. So bad. It would have been a great conversation. Even with a short term memory, it, it would have been dope. I don't care, but I don't. If if it, I w- I will tell you what. If I, it's it's, I know it's God. Okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're wise. You're way wiser than I am. I know. I know one thing. The first, if somebody would have clown my dad, I would have. Y'all would have caught. Y'all would have caught hell. I I would have gone to every length that I could. <laughs> yeah, I would have turned into Liam Neeson for sure. I have a very special set of skills. I will find you. And I will kill you. I, it would have been some first nigga that would have clowned my dad out of scorched earth. So God knows best. God knows best because people can be cruel. Um, and people have free speech too, but just know some stuff you can't do. <sighs> mm. You see the super chat that just came in for you? It's really sweet. From Marion. Yeah, I know exactly. I know exactly who that is. I love you, Marion. Yeah, you met him for sure. You know him. Oh man. Yeah, we'll all meet him when we get to heaven for sure. When we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all meet jesus we will sing and shout the victory i'm that churchy i'm that level of church Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm that level of churchy oh man When we all meet Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. I'm that level of churchy. I'm, I, I, I know y'all niggas don't think I'm saved. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all don't think I'm saved. Y'all just mad I'm not saved like you. That's what that is. Oh, I'm saved. 
I love them. Y'all just mad it's not like you. My mama just left me a voice note. But it's two minutes and 54 seconds. I can't check it right now, mommy. But you okay, though. As long as you okay, though. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you sing good, bro. Listen. <laughs> you really do. I be trying to control myself. <laughs> but I'm churchy. <laughs> okay, let me let me calm down. Listen. Hello, sir. Hola. Sí, bendiciones. So, um, yeah, da Daddy taught me to be a very um, responsible man and a very uh, kind man, forgiving man. Daddy had a temper when he was young, and um, it, we, we called it the Ross temper. A lot of men in my family had it. It skipped me. Mm, yeah, I think it skipped me. Because I was never just a brooding, angry person. But my daddy had it. And he, when I tell you, he stamped that thing out. He didn't want it. He prayed about it. And when he got that peace, I tell you, this dude became like the dopest ambassador for the family and the peacemaker and... He worked at the post office for over 30 years and he became a shop steward. Shop stewards are the ones that like basically mediate between other workers in like the union. He was basically like the post office shift lawyer. Like, you know what I mean? Like he, he would have been the judge Wapner of the post office. Like he was just a, he, he just knew how to mediate. And, and, him learning how to hold tension like that, I get, I get that from him. It's like, hey, I can hear, I, I, I sense what you're feeling. I've heard what you've had to say, and I've, and I've sensed what you're feeling, and I've heard what you've had to say. And guess what? We're gonna all be okay. We're gonna all be okay. We, 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 we got room for the way you feel, and we got room for the way you feel. I may not agree with either one of you. If I do ag agree with one purpose, one person's perspective, it's not to the detriment of yours. Um, I don't want to be on either anybody's side. I just want, I just want what is right. And um, that's the way, that's the way I live my life. I live my life off that. And so, um, yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't feel like I have to um, I think one of the greatest gifts my dad gave me is that now that he's gone, I don't have to do nothing. <laughs> like, 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 I ain't got to like do, I don't have to like have a tribute to my dad, for everything meaningful in my life from this day forward. Like it's, that would be based off performance. You know what I'm saying? I get to do stuff for my daddy because I love him. Not not because I want to do this for my dad. I want to make sure he knows I'm proud. And, okay, I will talk about this. Oh, boy. Trigger alert. Let me get my phone open just in case the saints need prayer when I go here because y'all might need to. All right. In five, four, three, two, one. We got to clean up the theology of death for a believer in Jesus. Okay. My dad doesn't have wings. He's not getting any wings. He's not an angel. My dad is not up in heaven looking down on me. 
That would be torture <laughs> for the believer who stands in front of the judgment seat, is accepted by God, uh, and gets to live in heaven for, for eternity, and they still up there thinking about us, looking down on us. My dad has now become my angel, and he's looking over me. No, he's not. I promise you he's not. And I'm not talking to him either. <laughs> I'll see him again, but we ain't talking now. That's a seance, fam. Stop it. Huh? If you find yourself in a room with four more people and y'all are holding hands and some ladies in the middle, I don't know why it's always a lady. It could be a man. And they're talking about Uncle Johnny just told me to tell you, I'm going to need you to leave that room. Because that's not happening. Uncle Johnny shouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> when I go to heaven, I ain't going to be thinking about nobody else down here. I promise you I won't. Not even Juliet. I won't be thinking about Nathan and Noah. No, because every tear is going to be wiped from my eye. So that I can enjoy his glory. Not remember my story. So, yeah, this is, this is, we just need to clean up that theology because everybody be saying, yeah, a, 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 another angel just got their, their wings. Well, they wasn't an angel here. They ain't going to be an angel there. Stop playing. This was a sinner saved by grace. That nigga wasn't perfect. <laughs> Y'all got to stop that. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandra, please don't put them ghetto wings on me on a T-shirt. That part. That part. Thank you, Alejandra. We don't need that. That's foolishness. That is foolishness. <laughs> Solo B16. I'm going to have to screen record and share this with the fam. <laughs> Y'all got y'all grandmama and y'all uncles and y'all big daddy and everybody flying around heaven, becoming part of the angel force. You, you done made them spiritual avengers. They coming down. My grandmother was with me when I got in the car accident. No, your grandmama was not. <laughs> Yo, grandmama ain't thinking about you. Yeah, my daddy ain't going to be, like, there ain't going to be no clouds around my dad on the funeral program. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just in the middle of the sky. Like, he, y'all got him, like, in a chair in the sky. Like, he just jumped out of a plane with no parachute. With the halo. With the, ha the, halo, the halo's crazy. Fam. The halo's crazy. I don't know. Where did that come from? I have no clue, dude. I don't know the origin of the halo, but it's wild. Just a ring above the head? It's just floating? It ain't a fitted cap. It's nothing. It's just, it's just a gold donut. Greece culture. <laughs> it says from Greece and uh, and Rome. See, we gotta we uh 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 hey uh uh I don't know what we uh, hey Christians uh Greece called and they would love their mythology back. <laughs> hey uh Christians, Rome called. They would like their theology back. You do know that uh, Rome was oppressing Jewish people at the time of our Savior's life on earth. Maybe give them back their culture and maybe just stick to the Bible. Because I will say this, I'm just sick of people adding stuff to the Bible. We be stapling and just a paper clip and stuff as an addendum to the whole Bible, and I'm be sitting there looking like, what are y'all doing? We can't pass on Gold Donut, though. That's such a great word. That's, uh, that's a business waiting to happen. Gold Donut. Angel-themed. Angel-themed. <laughs> Halos. What do you sell here? Gold Donuts. <laughs> do you sell any other flavors? We sell Gold Donuts, fam. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Somebody said it's a halo on a do-rag. Yeah, man. And, and I'm going to be honest. Listen, I know that judgment belongs to the Lord. 
But man, I've gone to some funerals and they have basically deified some of these people with the the original apostles. And I'm like, I know that Joker was from O Block. Like, I'm I'm sure you died in the gang shootout. And I don't think you were an innocent bystander. I think you pulled out the chopper. And you, your aim wasn't as good as the other person's. And now we got the nerve. This, jo- this joker died in a gang shootout. We talking about another angel got his wings. That's, that's a, I, don't, I don't think that's an angel. I think that was a little, a little uh, assassin. That was a little imp. <laughs> that was a little. Uh, uh, that was a little murderer starter kit, and and it didn't go well for that person. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, my mom actually, my mom is not going to have an open casket. That's the thing, man. With, 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 when you, like, you be thinking about all of this different stuff. You know, uh, my daddy declined in health. When you say a, a person declined in health, my daddy declined in health. And, um, you know, I wanted to be with my dad. Um in his final days, in his final hours, I didn't get to, I didn't get down to his final minutes, uh, but I got down to the final hours, like within two hours. I'm almost certain I was the last person to touch my daddy uh, before he went to heaven, and that that was that was good for me. But my mommy made a decision, like, yeah, no, it's not gonna be an open casket because he ain't gonna look like the picture. You know what I mean? Sometimes your health can decline and, and death can death can leave its mark on you. And there ain't enough makeup and embalming fluid, you know, to kind of shift that. And so, th- you know, that's my daddy, but that's her husband. <laughs> I knew the man 48 and a half years, so I wasn't far behind my mama. But my daddy put me in my mama. I mean, let's keep that a book. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's 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 cause he found her that I'm here. Not the other way around. So my mommy is is the is the widow of my hero. And her wishes are granted. Like if this is what she wants, this is what she gets. And how's she holding up? Man, mommy's a mommy's a, a, a mature disciple of Jesus. So she is, she, she is grieving and living. Those two things. She's grieving and she's living. She will fall out and cry. And then she will go to Sprouts. <laughs> and then she will come home and, you know, he is not there. He was not with her when she left. He is not with her when she came back. And she's, yeah, she's, she's, uh, she's walking through it. You know, how do you, I mean, you've been with somebody 52 years, fam. My mommy kept saying, I can't describe it. I I just can't describe how I feel. I said, a part of you died in that bed. And she just said, that's that's what it is. I said, you are a one. I said, half of you died in that bed. She said, baby, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, Maxine put on a clinic on what it meant to honor that portion of the vows in sickness and in health, mama put on a master class. <gasps> mama put on a master class. I can't even get into the details of it. Y'all wouldn't be able to handle it, but I'm gonna tell you right now, my mama put on a master class on what it means to love somebody in sickness and in health. I 
I can't tell you how many stories I know somebody gets sick and I, I didn't sign up for this. I, this is too hard for me. I can't take it. I'm so sorry. I don't want to leave the marriage, but I, I, I can't handle this part of it. I'm like, did you, do you remember saying that part of the vows? Or did you write them, them cute vows that, 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 that gave you an out on anything that was going to be inconvenient? Get out of here. My mama. Ooh, I wish you could have saw Maxine in, in daddy's last days. The dignity. The strength, the, the love. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. My daddy had it. Ooh. When I tell you my daddy had a good thing, he had a, when I tell you, he found himself a wife. That man didn't have crust in his eyes. He didn't have no cream in the corner, corners of his mouth. Man's breath was fresh. Had, lips had balm on them. Huh? <laughs> you never saw nobody die this good. Maxine. Ooh. <laughs> my mama. My mama is unbelievable. Yeah, that man. That man had a good woman. And he knew it. He absolutely knew it. <sighs> yeah, my daddy was fresh and clean. Mama kept him fresh and clean. It's good stuff. I'm going to miss you, Poppy. That's just that. I'm going to miss you. I got six years worth of voicemails. That's a treasure trove. I guess AT&T going to keep my money. Mommy told me the other day, she was like, baby, <laughs> she's so sweet. She was like, baby, um, you know, I know you pay for our phones and you can just, you know, you can have daddy's phone turned off because I don't want you that to be an unnecessary bill on your <laughs> that phone might stay on for 10 years i might just want to call and leave a voicemail <laughs> i'm not mm -mm, i'm not doing that it actually might be like such a great way to grieve yeah man i just might want to call him and leave a voicemail i pay the bill hell it ain't going on at&t takes that money automatically I ain't got time to be thinking about, did I pay that bill? Just take the money. It's in there. Guess who taught me that? <laughs> I ain't scrambling to pay no bills every month. The money's in there. I, I, I have a budget. I live within my means. at and ain't going to ever have no problem getting no doggone money out of me. I don't care. Oh, my God. I forgot to pay. I don't forget to pay nothing. My daddy bought me a car when I was 16 years old. It was a Honda Accord, a brown Honda Accord, four-door sedan, beige interior, wind-up windows. And he put an aftermarket cassette tape in there, cassette deck in there. When I was 16, man, and you know how he paid for it? Overtime at the post office. I'm not no trust fund, baby. La Puente, bro. La Puente. Mm -hmm. Balinda. Entiendes. Ese. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that dude is... That dude just... Is y'all's house still out there? Mm-hmm. I'm strongly considering buying it. Y'all buy this book. <laughs> Y'all buy this damn book. I'm going to go buy the house. <laughs> I, I want it. It's my childhood home. I actually, I actually want the house. I want the house. 
I'm not going to give the address. I know the address by heart. I know mommy's work number at the LAPD by heart to this day. Um, I do want, I, I want, I want that house. I took my boys to go see it in 2020. I think, I don't know. I think I shared that with y'all that I took my boys back to Cali in 2020. They were listening to a lot of hip hop music. Um, and you know, music could change your attitude. Music to change the way you walk and talk and all that kind of stuff. That's why I listen to praise and worship music primarily because if I listen to anything else, I'm going to start bopping in a certain way. And my kids was walking around the house like they was like they was some gangsters. And so I was like, yeah, no, y'all are not gangster. I have to remind you that you're like, you're upper middle class black kids who've never seen the hood in your life. So I'm, let's go to the hood. And so it was the bougiest way to take him to the hood. Like I, I bought first class tickets to <laughs> LAX. Like it, we weren't roughing it, right? Because when you survive the hood, you're like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. So we weren't roughing it by any stretch of the imagination. Because we first class tickets there, um, rented a Denali and drove it back to Texas. But I took him. I did take him to the hood, broad daylight though, like not at night. And I showed them the house that we grew up in. My the whole house that I that I grew up in would fit on the first floor of the house I have now with seven hundred square feet left over. The whole house. Three bedroom, one one and a half bath. Uh huh. Excuse me. Yeah, that that um. But my dad and mommy got us in that house, and then he brought me a car when I was sixteen, handed me the keys. Um. All right, this is one of my favorite stories. Um. Talk to talk about like character and integrity, and like being a man of your word. I can pinpoint the exact moment that I wanted to be this type of man. And this is pre-Jesus, okay? So we used to all, if you from LA and you didn't go roller skating, what did you do growing up, right? So um, we used to go to this place called Skate Junction in West Covina. And um, I got my car, like I said, when I was 16 and I could drive. And so we would go to Skate Junction and we would, we would skate for like two sessions. Like it would usually be between like six and 10. And um, uh, we are six and 10 or eight and 12. And so um, we, I would tell my dad, we're going we, we gonna to go to the skating rink. Okay, son, y'all have a good time. Well, I was one of the only people, I think me and Eddie Love were the only two me, Eddie Love, and Marshall were the only three guys that had cars in our neighborhood that I hung out with. I don't know about everybody else, but that I hung out with. And so the homies would be like, yo, you got your car now. Yo, tell your dad, like, like say you're going to the skating rink, but then let's cut to this party. Or let's, let's go try to get in this club. And I'd be like, oh, hell no. Like... <laughs> I ain't doing that. I could get caught. How you gonna get caught? Your dad don't know. And obviously this is what, let's see. I would have been, this is 91. This is 1991, 90, 91. So they're like, yo. Uh, so I, I, would, I would always tell them, nah, we're not gonna do that. And let me tell you what happened one day. What happened one day is we go skating and we get to the skating rink. And we're chilling. We're having a great time. And I drove there. Then I drove home. I get home. And I'm like, man, it was just a great day. My dad comes in the room. He says, how was, um, how was your time at the skating rink? I said, oh, it was great. 
We had a great time. We we stayed for two sessions. And then we went to get something to eat and we came home. He said, I'm glad to hear that, son. He said, I know you were there. I said, you do? Mind you, this is 91. There are no cell phones. There, 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 there. You had pagers. You could, there was no text messages. I said, you, you do? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, I accidentally left my camera bag in your trunk. Because my dad was a freelance photographer. So he did weddings and all that kind of stuff on the side. Mm -hmm. Like really good photos too. Um, I, a couple of those photos that I put up um, was based on a photography class that he had to do. And he had to take these self-portraits. And so he always brought us. We were always his subject. That way I can smile on a dime to this day. Cause, and, and hold it. I can hold it for as long as we need to. So he said, I know you were there. He said, uh, I accidentally left my camera bag in the trunk of your car uh, when I went to uh, Mount Sac Community College to do my class. He said, so I drove up to the skating rink. I went through the parking lot. I found the car. I popped the trunk. I got the camera bag, and I drove home. And he said, thank you for being exactly where you said you were going to be. That I could forget that drive there and see your car there and not have to be worried about where you were. He said, I will trust you with anything. And bro, wow. it was like, I'm, it was like my soul drank in those words. And I just remember thinking to myself, the, I remember the feeling that I had. It wasn't like, oh snap, I'm caught. Hey, how, how was the skating rink? Oh, it was cool. Where was the car? Huh? It, it wasn't that moment. It was, it was great. He was like, I know it was. And I know you were there because I drove up there. And I appreciate you being where you said you were going to be. I can trust you with anything. And it was like my, my soul drank those words in. And I just remember that feeling and I just kind of felt like I want that feeling for the rest of my life. I want to be trusted. I want my dad to trust me. I want people to trust me that if I say something to him, it's going down. You, you know what I mean? You embody that now. Well, thank you. Thank you. But I got it from him. Mm -hmm. I like, and I remember the exact scenario, bro. It wasn't like, yeah, I've just always kind of been like this. My dad just kind of. No, I remember that moment. I said I was going to be at the skating rink, and I was at the skating rink, and my daddy came up there and saw the car in the parking lot and knew I was at the skating rink. And I didn't have to lie. I wasn't caught. I didn't. And a man of few words said he trusts you. And that means something. Means something then, means something now, will mean something forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's the kind of man I would be. We were talking yesterday, uh, before we jumped on the plane to come here. Like, um, obviously, there, there are pros and cons to living to, to live in a vulnerable life in public, right? There's a there, there's a pros and cons to living a vulnerable life uh, in public on a hot mic. But we were talking about being congruent again. We were talking about um, being the same everywhere. I don't I don't have to hide the way I talk. If someone were to if someone were to take their phone and we were at dinner and I was talking about some stuff, nobody could ever busted Tim Ross talking to Hector while eating lunch and saying this. Ain't nothing I ain't said on this mic that would be different than what I say in private. The covenant that I made after talking to William McDowell, and it's on record because I did an IG Live about it, is that I would not use strong language anymore on the mic because I don't want it to be a stumbling block to people that I still preach for. But make no mistake, <laughs> I use strong language sometimes. You ain't going to ever catch me at no restaurant. Busted Tim Ross drinking wine. You ain't going to catch me drinking. You ain't going to catch me drinking no wine. You might see me drinking some wine, but you ain't catching me do nothing. Jesus drunk wine. I drink wine. 
You will never catch me drinking an old fashioned. You might see me, ha! but you ain't gonna catch me. Because if I'm drinking old fashioned, I meant that thing. I ain't gotta hide it. Why? Because I am me. Here or there. I am me in a house. I am me with a mouse. I am me in a boat. I am me with a goat. I am me with Sam. I am me with green eggs and ham. I will Dr. Seuss this for you if it will break it down for you. This is my life, man. And while, I, and, and while most of y'all are here screaming, carnal! Go, 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 get, go, go get the priest from messing with these boys. Stay out my mouth. <laughs> Stay out my mouth. Just go get the priest messing with the boys. Go, go get the pastor that's using his influence to uh, sleep with the soprano section and three of the tenors. That is happening. I know. That's why I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go 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 find out who is the who who is the culprit in your community that's sowing discord amongst the brethren. Go find out who's lying on the sister in the church just out of jealousy. Go find out who's causing division. Go find the church splitter. Cause you're not catching me doing nothing. You're congruent. I'm showing you. This is who I am. And you 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 can go ahead and block. That would be nice. That option is there on all social media platforms. I would rather not see this. I I, I did this example for my my boys the other day. I don't know. Is this in there? Can is that in there? Okay. I did this for my boys the other day. Here is my explore page. Let me refresh it. Bang. Right? Let me refresh it again. Bang. There's a lady that's, this, is, this lady's pregnant. Yeah, that lady's pregnant. I don't know who that is. It don't even matter. Look at that Explorer page. Do y'all see any booty cheeks in this Explorer page? Y'all see any Insta models in this Explorer page? I mean, I can scroll. What? What is, where is the... Let me see. The search. Make sure. There's the search. Ain't no Insta models there. Ain't no inappropriate stuff there. I mean, I could do this all day. I disrupted the algorithm. I went through that Explorer page, and I'm not interested that button so much. The only thing they bring me is some, is some basketball clips and some news editorials, and some butterflies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why? Because I don't, I, listen, I block stuff I don't like. And your team has your account. You have nothing to hide. Yeah, y'all got my account. I block stuff I don't like. I don't know what y'all out here doing. Y'all trying to, y'all, y'all, Y'all swear y'all out here to make sure I'm not dangerous and don't know what's going on in your own church. Stop that. Brought to you by Charles Edward Ross. <laughs> Feel me? So I'm, I'm, listen. If anything, daddy dying just going to make me quadruple down. I'm I'm I will quadruple down. I will quintuple down 
on what I'm talking about. We in the basement for a reason. We pressed B for a reason. We will be seen, heard, known, loved, even if we're disagreed with. That is, that is what we're doing down here. Add that to the vocabulary. I, I wish I would have had this synthesized a little bit more uh, because I would have made it a chapter in the book. But that's at the end of the day, we created this safe space, excuse me, so that people could be seen, heard, known, loved, even if they're disagreed with. Everybody is owed the first four. I believe every human on earth is owed the first four. Fifth is optional. I believe everybody should be seen. Everybody should be heard. Hear me. Everybody should. I do not want to live in a country where people cannot be heard. Even the most hateful. I want to hear from them because I want to know where they stand. <laughs> I don't want the KKK not to have rights. I need to know where these niggas are. I don't need to be inconvenienced by no racists. I, I also, though, don't wear the mask, though. Please don't do that. So, so, so I want you seen. I want you heard. Huh? I, I, I want to know you. I want to know you. I, I need, I need, I need you to, I need to make yourself known. Because I want to love you. I want to love you right where you are. Even if I disagree with you. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus coming down from heaven, taking off glory, emptying himself of the divine privileges as the word of God, putting on mortality, wrapping himself up in flesh, being born through the womb of a virgin, the creator housing himself within the womb of his created. Being birthed into the earth realm through a body he created, nursing from the nipple of a woman he created with milk he put in her breast. Jehovah Jireh, nursing off his own provision. That man, God, fully, in man, fully, walking on this earth, seeing us, hearing us, knowing all about us, and still loving us, even if he's disagreeing with us. I'm not asking any of us to do anything that Jesus didn't already do for us. I will see you. I will hear you. I will know you. And I will love you. Even if I disagree with you. And all I'm asking that is that you afford me the same opportunity. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. I will see you. I will hear you. I will know you and I will love you, even if I disagree with you. And all I'm asking is for the same opportunity. You see something you don't like. I'm not a, I'm not I'm not guaranteed the fifth thing, but see, hear, know, and love, even if you disagree. That is our gospel, if you can and will. If you can and will, it, it, will be, it will be a blessing to you. Yeah. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. So, um, hey, I love it. The name of the book is Welcome to the Basement. We are at the uh, Petersburg Library in Virginia. 
if y'all are in the DMV area, pull up. What are you even doing? They they got tickets left. We need to sell out everywhere we go. Atlanta sold out. We got to sell out tonight now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Sell, it, sell it out. Buy the book. Come through. Sit down. Booyah. I'm going to sign every book. I ain't leaving until I do. We ain't got nothing but time. Our flight don't leave till 5 a.m. <laughs> Zero dark 30. <laughs> so it, it's all good. Just come through. It's all good. Yeah, the book, the, the book will, will be on sale at this event. I believe so. They have the books here, right? We shall see. I do know they are bringing an entire set, and I'm going to text them to ensure that we have books coming too. Okay, great. Done deal. But this is a library. If they don't sell books at the library, what are these people doing? That would be terrible. <laughs> uh, is that Drea loading or Dre? Hold up. I live in Virginia. Don't tempt me with a good time. I'm tempting you with a good time. I bet you I am. My tailbone hurts in this chair. Is Lord it, have mercy. Is it wax sauce? I don't know. I don't have no... I do no suffer support. from... No acetal? <laughs> Say again, boss. <laughs> you got me there, Jack. <laughs> I suffer from this uh, debilitating yeah, yeah. disease Acet- called no acetal. I heard. Roger. And um, so my tailbone is... is uh, I can feel it. There's no... Within my relationship with Juliet, Juliet got all the booty. Mm. Woo! Praise God. God help me today. Ooh, I need to go home. <laughs> because that's where my booty is. It's at home with my wife. Oh, it's in back of her. It's in back of her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm going to need a cushion tonight or else I'm not going to make it. All right, Dominique's coming. She's an hour and a half away though. God may traffic be light for Dominique. Sarai. <laughs> My sister, <laughs> why are you like, you know why I'm like this, Rye. D- you're the last person that needs to ask me this question. Don't ask me this question, Rye. You know the answer to the question. Someone asked a question. Why am I like this? That's all I got right there. <laughs> Uncle. Uncle. <laughs> Alejandra, Uncle Tim twerking right now. Go order the book, y'all. This is not a twerk. This is an adjustment. <laughs> I'm just, that she put tweaking, not oh, twerking. She put tweaking? Oh, tweaking. <laughs> oh, I thought that said twerking. Twerking. It was a TW, and then my, my eyes just populated the rest. <laughs> I thought she put twerking. I was about to say, no, I'm just adjusting. <laughs> twerking. And, but I ain't got nothing to wiggle. It, it, it would just be, I don't, I, you can't twerk a back. <laughs> you got to have something to twerk. This ain't, this ain't it. I'll tell you, um, get the man a sacral cutout pillow. That's very specific. Um, let me say, <laughs> this is too much oh, for me. Oh, those are nice. Yeah. Extended back, rattling bones. Y'all are... Hey, can I? Okay, so can I just tell y'all? Can I just tell y'all why I love y'all so much? One of the most beautiful things I love about the basement is that we can have a day like this, where we're just holding y'all are just holding space for me. Like honestly, I just talked about my dad. We we get to live life together. That I think I think a lot of times, I, I and I used to see this early on. I don't see this much anymore. But I remember when we first started, like really delving into like what it means to be a basement dweller and some of the conversations we would have on the pod, people would be like, you're not in the Bible. How come you're not breaking open scripture? How come you're not? 
Where's the... This man's, this man's in his flesh. He's just talking about nonsense. And I'm like, do all y'all do all day is break down scripture? Y'all don't do nothing else? You just go from church to a small group, from a small group to Bible study, to Bible study, to devotional plan, from devotional plan to prayer, from prayer back to devotional plan, devotional plan, back to a Sunday morning service. What? what? With no therapy. You drive in the car, and then all you do is listen to sermons, and you get out the car, and then you immediately pop in the earbuds, and then all you do is listen to worship music, then you sit down at your desk, and then you write in your prayer journal while you should be working. All y'all do, you just can't have a normal conversation. How you doing today? Blessed and highly favored. Come on, you don't have like a like a, just a day where you just like, we just ha ha and kiki. What do we really talk about? Nothing. But it felt so good to be amongst my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and just talk about my daddy and laugh and, and joke and clown. And did anybody sin? Did we did anybody sin? Has anybody moved away from Jesus in the last two hours based on what we've been talking about? Has any has anybody? I think I only got one person in here who, if I need to apologize to anybody. I said niggas so much, they listening with their baby, and they baby the only the only word they baby has heard is nigga. So now there's probably a two year old baby. Uncle Tim got them saying nigga. That that's about it. Okay, and 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 now that 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 little baby is gonna embarrass mama somewhere where she don't want it because they gonna be <laughs> she gonna be. She gonna be at the grocery store, you know, with the little, and you put your baby in the little basket, and and the baby gonna be like banana, banana, and the mama gonna be like no, and then the baby gonna be like nigga, <laughs> that's what's gonna happen, and, and and it's gonna be because of me. That's gonna be because of me. That's my bad. That's my bad. That's on me, people. That's on me. My bad. I forgot y'all have. He's one and a half. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, not y'all checking to see if it's a white baby. Is it a white baby? <laughs> That's wild. That's y'all's concern? Y'all are wild. Yeah, so um, so what do we got? We got gold donuts. <laughs> yeah, we got an S-Corp coming through. <laughs> it's going to be a real thing. Dude. New business downloading. <laughs> gold donuts. So, anyway... Uh, <laughs> Deborah, you wild. Y'all are wild. Backpack little O. Backpack little O. Backpack. Back no, you backpack, bro. That's Dora the Explorer. You you had the wrong person. Tiffany, Tim, my dad had a brain aneurysm in two thousand three. He didn't make it. He died on MLK Jr. He died on MLK Jr. Uh, I had just turned 20. I miss him, and I know where my daddy is, Tiffany. Um, I wish I didn't know the pain that you feel, and I do. And I'm 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 so sorry. I'm 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 so sorry. And I'm glad you know where he is. Andrew said, at least, <laughs> at least the baby wanted a banana instead of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yes, please get that baby a banana instead of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Please. All right, it's 2 o'clock. We did the thing. We did that thing. We crushed it. I'm so scared of the Uber situation here. I don't want to go back to the hotel. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm actually scared that we won't get back here <laughs> until 9.47. <laughs> And this whole place will be filled and we'll be stuck in Richmond. Yeah. So we're just gonna We'll figure it out. Let's just walk let's just walk around Petersburg aimlessly. Yeah. Let's just walk around and just play pickleball? Hell no. I'm not playing pickle. Y'all gotta stop. I'm not playing pickle. That's on Charles. My daddy been dead nine days. I'm already putting stuff on him. That's on Charles. Ain't nobody playing pickleball. <laughs> Y'all in this pickleball. I'm not playing pickleball. 
Y'all can't make me. That's why my daddy, I'm not playing nobody's pickleball. I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll come support you. <laughs> On Charles, you ain't gonna, see, that paddle ain't gonna be in my hand. Amen. I'm not playing pickleball with y'all. It's so fun. If you don't hush, you have fun yourself. <laughs> short tennis. <laughs> Yo, short tennis. Hey, bro, short tennis is low key. Reckless. That's wild, dude. <laughs> Yo, short tennis made me feel like Juliana is the only person that should be on the court. It's the only one. Yo, short tennis got me thinking. Short bus. That's wild. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. Listen, this has been so... Thank y'all for holding space for me. Thank y'all for being so kind to listen to me talk about my dad and just kind of process this. Um, I do think I'm ahead of the curve because I do embrace grief. I'll leave y'all with this. Um, I uh, let me get back to my let me get back to where y'all are because uh, I was kind of ADD real quick. Um, yeah, short tennis is kind of really hilarious. I can't even get over it. Um, uh, I want to leave y'all with this. When it comes to grief, I want to tell you about the, the the arrangement I've made with my grief. And it's helped me get through this thing with my daddy. The death of my daddy. Before I say that, let me say this. And please get me back on track, Hector, if I go off and I go, what, what was I talking about again? Um, but, but just remind me that grief, uh, I wanted, that I need to tell them about the arrangement I've made with grief if I get off track. But let me say this before I say that. Um, when it comes to When it comes to the word death, we, we need to embrace it because it will really help you with grief if you accept that word. My daddy didn't pass away. My daddy didn't transition. My daddy's not just simply in a better place. My daddy died. <laughs> and that's okay. Like you ain't trying to, I'm so sorry about the, untimely passing of your father well it's appointed unto man wants to die wants to die not to pass away to die to live as christ and to pass away is gain no to live as christ and to transition is gain no to live as christ and to die is gain jesus died on the cross he was placed in a borrowed tomb. And after three days, he got up with all power in his hand. He took power and keys from death, hell, and the grave. So we got to embrace that word. We can't be afraid of it. People are going to die. And it will really help you in the grieving process when you realize something is dead. Someone is dead. They died. And you got to grieve and you got to move. And sometimes you got to do both at the same time. You can have a season that came and the season is over. Let it die. Some of y'all got seasons on life support that should be dead. But you still got it pl plugged up to a life support machine because you ain't ready to say goodbye to it. You better let that thing die. And stop putting all this Jesus glitter and, and rewording it. This transition, this season gracefully expired, it died. Died, died, died. Arrangement of grief. Here's what I want to say about grief. Uh, I made an arrangement with my grief, and here it is. When my grief comes to me, I acknowledge it. That's my, that's my arrangement with grief. When you show up, I will acknowledge you. I will not ignore you. 
I will not suppress you. I will not shove you in a corner. When you show up, I will acknowledge you instantaneously, no matter what I'm doing. So in this pod, there was a moment where my grief showed up in tears. You're welcome here. Sometimes my grief shows up in anger. You're welcome here. Sometimes my grief shows up in um, disbelief. I can't believe daddy's gone. Come on in. You're welcome here. Because here's what I'm not going to do. What I'm not going to do is keep stuffing grief in the corner. I'm too busy right now. I'm doing something. I'm too busy right now. I'm doing something. I'm too busy right now. I'm doing something. Because you know what would happen if you ignore your grief? It'll jump on you when you least expect it and at the most inopportune time. And it will embarrass you in ways that you did not want to be embarrassed. So I just want I just want everybody in here to know. Uh acknowledge your grief. Don't suppress it. Don't stuff it down. Acknowledge your grief. As Nancy Houston would tell me, do your grief work. Do your grief work. Sit in it. Sit in it. Let it be awkward. I didn't go to sleep till three o'clock in the morning last night. The absence of my daddy in my life is is loud right now. And I didn't go to sleep till three o'clock in the morning. And it had nothing to do with me eating Wendy's. So do your grief work. Y'all pray for me. And um, if I don't see you on this tour, I'll see you back. Uh, will we be able to do this next Monday? Where are we? We should be in Texas next month. Okay, great. I think this is I, I think this is the only Monday where we are out of the city. Got it. Cool. Well then I'll see y'all next Monday. Um and uh just pray for me this week. Pray for my mom and my wife and my kids and everything as we um you know, celebrate my father and say goodbye to him. We're gonna celebrate his life. Um he wanted me to eulogize him. And I'm going to preach good for my daddy. Mm -hmm. Organ and everything. Hooping and everything. All of it. He wanted it. He getting it. He want that work. He getting that work. Um, Atlanta, I'll see y'all on Thursday. Uh, we got eight. Well, for you, Atlanta Thursday. Next Friday on the 15th, Tulsa. Great. Oh, Tulsa will be fire. Tuesday the 19th, you'll be in NOLA. NOLA. Ooh. Let's get it. March 21st, Thursday, Los Angeles, which uh, pending should be a podcast. We'll see. Fantastic. Uh, March 26th, Houston. Great. Then we end in Dallas and Fort Worth between the 28th and the 30th. Fantastic. Oh, my goodness. They got us going everywhere. Wow. Well, um, I love you guys. If I see y'all tonight, I see y'all. If not. I'll see you next week. Peace.